Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Dalen Yanagida and I'm here in the Think Tech studios today. We're in broadcasting from um, Pioneer Plaza, sorry, in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are live at www.thinktechhawaii.com and you may also subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list um, at that site as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us how they were able to build successes in our challenging work environment. We are so excited today to have our friends, our neighbors from the University of um, Phoenix in the studio. So we have Dr. Summer Van Pelt, Campus Director, Dr. Renee Green, Program Chair in the School of Business, and Ty Tynan, yes. uh, COO from Choice Technologies. So Hello. a bunch of very prestigious titles. <laughs> um, I want to welcome you to the show. Hello. How, how is everyone? We're doing great. Right. Right. We, we managed to get everyone one here in a, in, a, in a small space, so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're buddies now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't we start by um, sharing a little bit of background and your connection to the University of Phoenix, and of course, Ty, we want to hear about Choice Technologies. So do we want to start with you, Dr. Green? Sure. You know, I've been with um, the University of Phoenix since 2010, but I've been in this position for almost four years. And it's, it's been a great journey to be able to, you know, bring inspiration, motivation, and just co um, collaboration between the University of Phoenix, the students, and the community. It's been a, a great journey, and I'm just so excited. Fantastic. Me? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I've actually been in higher education for almost 20 years. 15 of those years have been with the University of Phoenix, and I've actually had the opportunity to uh, be at different campuses. So I was overseas in Asia. We oh, had a military wow. campus over there for about 11 years, and I was recently in the Bay Area in San Francisco, and I moved here in April. So Very nice. Well, welcome to Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. I've, I lived here, too, when I was younger, so I was a military child, so I've kind of moved around a lot throughout my life. and. Obviously, I'd like to continue that path by moving. I'm hoping this, this will be my, my final destination here. Very nice. Um, but the journey, as Dr. Renee said, it's just it's been wonderful being in higher education, having that opportunity to work in a field where you're helping people to change their lives and their perspectives. So it's, it's been such an honor for me to be in higher education. Fantastic. Well, welcome back home, Thank you. I should say. <laughs> and Ty, yes. tell us about Choice Technology. Well, I think it starts first with me being from Kalihi. So I'm a Kalihi boy, uh, Kiki Okaina, born and raised here. Um, grew up in a housing projects. Uh, got fortunate enough to be accepted to Boston College and got out of the projects, went into management. Um, so I studied finance, marketing, and management and all the business sciences. Came back and thought, that's I, I'm equipped and ready to, to go to work and, and make a name for myself here in Hawaii. And what ended up happening was I was noticing as my career developed that people uh, focus on the business side on strategy and putting plans together and not focus on execution of that strategy or the culture of the organization. And so the second chapter of, of kind of my career uh, was to go back to college, go back to universities. And uh, I went to St. Mary's College, I was in California at the time, and what I had learned there was really about human development and about organizational development and how this how that science is social science and not business science and so what we've done is created a company choice technologies that uh, focuses on that consulting role to be able to help from the technology side that ultimately has to work with people and has to work with processes so all three of them end up coming together, and uh, that's what we've been doing. Um, part of uh, the consulting work that I've done in the past has been on the mainland with very, very large organizations such as McKesson, Walmart, and Honda. So uh, bringing back that knowledge, or the Ike as we call it in Hawaii, back to Hawaii, and uh, now trying to help uh, share that. And I feel very fortunate to uh, be invited by the University of Phoenix and uh, colleagues here because it is a community outreach. You know, the, the college is you know, focused on gearing up and, and giving equipping students. However, 
um, the community itself is beyond the school borders and they're opening up the doors wide open to involve the community. And so we're looking at uh, involving leadership from all aspects of Hawaii business and healthcare and, and so forth to come together and look at you know ways to improve uh, the engagement, which is not always the in-person's responsibility. It is you know the creating the conditions for, for engagement to happen. Fantastic. Um, you are a true testament to what we as a community want our young people to strive for, and that is seeking out your educational opportunities and then coming home and um, sharing your knowledge and your expertise um, with the locals again so that we can build our local economy with great resources. Um, we understand that a lot of students may stay away for a little mm -hmm. while because they get job opportunities, mm -hmm. but ultimately to come home and mm -hmm. bring all that talent back home, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, I'd like to uh, speak to that a, a little bit it, mm -hmm. further in the in the interview here. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, today, and, and thanks Ty for leading us into it, but today we're going to talk a little bit about engagement and what that means. And um, from a higher education perspective, we know that um, student engagement is very important because it's what keeps students in school till they finish. Right. But the University of Phoenix is, is unique because you do have a large non-traditional population. Non-traditional meaning sometimes adults, sometimes working yes. adults, sometimes um, having gone to work full time and then coming back and deciding to go to school. So their experiences are so much different. And people would tend to think that, oh, we don't have to engage them. They, they've lived life and they, they know where they want to go. Mm -hmm. but. That's not true, is it? No, it's not. Talk to us a little bit about your students and their engagement experience and how you'd like to see that perpetuate. Right, so one thing I would like to say before I even begin to um, channel that discussion is that we're really fortunate at the University of Phoenix to have so many students that are engaged. We have a huge military population and you know we have locals and we have you know just working adults in general. And one of the things we realize is the importance and value of engagement in the workplace. And what we wanted to do with that is to be able to raise that level of expectation because it starts, like my mother used to say, at home. So we consider the classroom at home. We teach them, we help groom them, and look at opportunities to take it to the next level so that when they get into the workplace, they're really focused. And just kind of chiming back to the previous discussion, it's all about trying to keep talent and um, Hawaii. We understand that Kapolei is really building up, you know, their um, workforce, their hiring, a lot of buildings are going up. But if we have engaged employees in that building, then, you know, it cuts down on the additional costs and we can keep people longer and develop that pool of knowledge. Let's talk about the workforce in a little bit, but Dr. Van Pelt, I want to ask you, um, it's probably one of your, your main goals to maintain student engagement. What do you do? What does a university do to encourage student engagement? As, as Dr. O'Neill was saying, that a lot of our students are, they do come to us engaged. They're passionate. They've decided this is what I want to do, whether it's a career change or just learning. So we're lucky in that aspect. So we really try to hone in onto that. And for us, our faculty are practitioners in the field. So they are actually teaching them skills that they can take right then and there and apply them on the job. So that's one of the main things that we, we focus on. And having those discussions about how the student will impact the environment and what their role is. And understanding that they have a larger role than I'm simply coming to class or I'm simply going to, to work for a job for a paycheck. But it's really honing into that passion that they have for school and taking that into the workplace and being able to directly apply that. Um, additionally, we have a lot of events that uh, Dr. Renee, she she's established many great ones for us for the School of Business. And we try to 
engage our communities, such as Thai, to come in and speak to the students and really see the impact that they that they can have on the community within Kapolei and Hawaii. And one of the things I'd just like to add to that is our platform is student-centered learning, so we mm -hmm. want our students to get involved. It's not just about us lecturing to them, but it's more so about a facilitation and the nice. students share their Ex, you know their knowledge and their wisdom you know in the classroom and that promotes healthy environment and a robust learning experience right. um, having come from the, the field of HR and still currently in the field of HR we know that the most productive employees are the employees who are engaged mm -hmm. right what does that mean what does that mean to be engaged and I'll open that up to, to all of you. Okay, so engagement, you know, is something that's inside the person. It's their passion, it's their drive, it's their desire to want to accomplish something and be a part of something that's kind of bigger than who they are and what they do. So, you know, we look at it as something that we don't have to share with people to try to get them motivated, but they're self-motivated. You know, they come in with that energy, with that determination, resilience, to really get out there and make a difference in the organization. They're focused. And we all know that when people are focused, things get done. Mm -hmm. Ty, um, I know that you have a very successful business and you've been here and you've been on the mainland. Tell me about your experiences in engagement, whether it's lack thereof mm -hmm. or, or an abundance mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. um, engagement, whether it's employees or contractors. What does that do for your business? Yeah, well, I guess the, the one word that comes to mind with in all these engagements that I've been doing, engagements, I mean, not from engagement in this way, but engaging in actual projects with clients is that um, the workers, even though they're not from Hawaii and they don't use pigeon, basically the answer is this place kills fight. I know local they say kill fight, right? Right, you just give up already, right? right? right. And then you just kind of stay there. So I think some of the things to look at maybe might be on the statistics, right? So we got 126 million uh, full-time employees in the United States right now. Um, they're being managed or management is about 10%. So you have 10% of of an organization that it has a voice and that has the ability to provide feedback into the decisions that are being made from, you know, quote unquote, the top down. And what some of the challenges with that is that uh, when you're looking for uh, cultivating collective intelligence in a, in a knowledge worker world, where we're not in the industrial manual labor world, where people, you just need their hands, now you need their, their heads and their hearts to be a part of of the company, otherwise you're losing 90% of the knowledge base that you have. So um, there are reasons why that is there. Part of it is to do with the 20th century industrial revolution, which is crazy success for the United States, right? However, uh, as of 1990, it switched from an industrial where all 50 states, majority was manual workers. After 1990, it switched up into being more of a knowledge worker. So you have a, a change, but in terms of management practices on the business side, they are still following very uh, old old school, quote unquote, old school methods. And so as far as success, it's really looking at what are the conditions to be created? What are the spaces? What are the resources that are being dedicated to create a new type of uh, process within an organization so that it accounts for collective intelligence, collective passion, and collective effort, and not only focused on compliance, because compliance is really, I think HR a lot of times becomes referees within an organization. What I've seen at many organizations, the cool part of being a consultant, you end up getting all this information from, from all different companies and you start to see patterns start forming. And I mean, I've consulted over 100 businesses in the past um, 20 years, so, and they're large ones, so I get to see this, it's almost like it's just the same thing at a different, call it another company and same type of issues are there. Right. Engagement and satisfaction go hand in hand, and um, I spent a lot of time in compensation in HR. And contrary to many people's belief, mm -hmm. it's not pay mm -hmm. right. that brings satisfaction to people. Mm -hmm. um, yes, pay needs to be a factor, but there's a bigger picture to yes. that. Right. And so a lot of times the questions about why is the company doing 
a family picnic? Why is the company participating in um, charitable events? And it's it's to bring culture, it's mm -hmm. to create culture, it's mm -hmm. to create a sense of unity, pride in the organization, mm -hmm. because that rolls over to mm -hmm. satisfaction, which rolls over to engagement. Right. And so we, we do know that on a student level, on a employee level, on a contractor level, mm -hmm. and it helps businesses um, to prosper because their their employees want to be there and they mm -hmm. want to work hard yes. and they're proud of what they do right, there. Right. So the work that you folks are doing is amazing. Now, we had Dr. Green on the show previously and uh, University of Phoenix um, is just loyal, loyal, loyal to, to our community. Mm -hmm. And they're always mm -hmm. finding ways to um, participate in the community. Um, when Dr. Green was with us the last time, you were promoting a technology event that was yes. open to the public, which was getting people in the community to talk about technology needs. So that was really great. You guys are doing a lot more of the same. Um, tell me about your event that you have coming up. Yes, and we're so excited about this event. It's called the hashtag I am engaged, and instead of taking place over one evening, it's going to take place over four evenings. It's from July 23rd to July 26th. And during that time frame, we have various um, military and uh, um, business leaders in the community coming up, coming in to share their perspective on engagement, you know, how can we increase the level of engagement, how can we um, bring the new and the next when it comes to engagement, and how can we let the, you know, students and employees that are coming to the event know we appreciate what you do, but now it's time to take it to the next mm -hmm. level, and we're just so excited to be able to do that. And Ty is going to be one of our speakers, mm -hmm. he's going to be presenting on Wednesday night. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. So yes. I know um, this is for the Kapolei community, but but people from any community are welcome. Oh, definitely. Right? We're having it in Kapolei only for the purpose that I know they're trying to keep a lot of their constituents on the west side, and it's, it's really growing quickly. Honolulu is growing too, so it's really open mm -hmm. to whoever feels like this is something that can benefit them or their organization. The event is free and parking is complimentary, so that's something that you need to know because we're excited to have you. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come up, come back, let's talk more about this exciting event and how you're getting the Kapolei community involved, the chamber yes. involved. That's so exciting for not only the attendees, but for the businesses. So we'll yes. talk about that when we come back. We're going to take that short break. This is Business in Hawaii, and we'll see you back here shortly. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Jay Fardell, founder of Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm Andrea Gabrielli, the host for Young Talents Making Way. Wait a minute, this is not a new, a new episode, is it, Jay? No, it's not a new episode. Um, you know, that show is over, Andrea. So uh, what are you going to do now? Hmm, why don't we have a summer edition of Young Talents Making Way, where we focus more on education as a mean for our young talents to max out become role models and achieve their dreams. What a great idea. So when do you want to begin, Andrea? July the 3rd, 2018, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Young Talents Making Way, Summer Edition. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii, and today we have the University of Phoenix and Choice Technologies in the studio. Um, I'd like to hear about what led you to being so interested in engagement, and I know that had to start with your students. 
Just right. tell me about that. Well, you know, as um, teachers and administrators in the University of Phoenix, engagement is so important to us because we want to create the best possible learning experience for our students. And recently, we had our graduation at the Blaisdell, and what stood out to me was a student, one of our student speakers, stood up in the front of the audience and shared, it took him 28 years to graduate, but he never lost his focus. The whole time he was engaged because of, you know, the people he met in the university, his learning team, his um, faculty members, everyone kept him engaged despite of adversities that he experienced. And on June the 3rd, he was able to rise and graduate. So that was a huge accomplishment. Well, congratulations yes. to him, right? Yes. We know how hard it is sometimes to stay focused and stay the course. Yes. Um, so with that, you folks decided that the community needed an opportunity to bring students, um, the workforce together, and the community to talk about engagement. So tell me about the hashtag I am engaged event. Yes, yeah, so it, it, again, it's going to take place over four different days, and it's going to be starting from July 23rd all the way to July 26th. So I just wanted kind of to share some of the things that will be going on. So on July 23rd, we thought the best way to do was to bring senior level leaders in the community and both business and the military to share, you know, why is engagement important? You know, what is the benefit to you and the organization? Because we already know that engagement improves productivity, it cuts down on the bottom line, it improves um, just students' reten people's retention in the workplace and in the university. So that was some of the points that we have. So we have a, a huge lineup of expertise in the community coming out, and that's on Monday night from 6 to 7. On Tuesday, we're really honored to have Penelope Pinek. She's going to be talking about civility and engagement in the workplace. So that's going to be huge because, you know, we have to play good in the sand. <laughs> no matter how engaged we are, we have to play good in the sand. And then Wednesday night, um, we're going to have Ty Titan and Dr. Red Brio from Choice Technologies. In just a minute, I'm going to let him share. And then on the last night, we have one of our retired sergeant majors. He, he's working at the... Um, Veterans Administration, he's going to come in and he's going to be talking about how do we um, take engagement today to prepare uh, employees for tomorrow. And that's going to be huge and really a nice segment to close it out. But I wanted to give Ty, since he's here today with us, oh, an opportunity just to share a little bit high level about what he's going to talk about Absolutely. on Wednesday the 25th from We'd 6 to 7. We'd love to seven. hear what you're going to yes. talk about, yeah. Ty. Yeah. Well, you got to come to hear all of it, right? <laughs> um, but no, Mahalo, Dr. Green. Thank you so much. And again, Dr. Summer, for, for the opportunity. And I forgot to mahalo you, oh. Dylan. Oh, you thank had, you. You had said that's exactly what we're trying to do is retain local talent and, and bring back, um, you know, the kama'aina that have left. There's a, a, one of the business news in Hawaii recently uh, uh, you know, put a story together and said that 30,000 residents have left Hawaii. And there's a brain drain, and there's a real issues of, of critical jobs not being filled because we don't have the talent that's here. We're not able to retain it, and are we cultivating the right talent so that we can have effective uh, workers in the in the field? And uh, two organizations I'm uh, with, one is HIMSS, a Health Information Management Society and System Society, as well as uh, the HLT's uh, Hawaii Information Technology Council. I, I sit on boards of both. And so we get to hear, because these councils, part of our strategy at Choice Technologies was to give back to the community. Part of it is volunteering for different communities. So we're in the IT and hospitality. Hospitality is one of the largest ones. Healthcare is another huge one in Hawaii, right? So I, I serve on both boards. And and I get to hear about the various organizational issues in, in, in that way as well. One of the things that have been brought up by the IT Council is that they're wondering whether or not the colleges and universities are preparing the students for the actual job as opposed to maybe the job as it was 10 years ago or so forth because what they're finding is the resume looks good, then they actually hire and then the person it, the, can't do really the functions. There's different skills that are needed. So um, we're actually working with to try to figure that out and, and tying in with the University of Phoenix as well as the other colleges in Hawaii, universities in Hawaii, to be able to help solve that. So to give you a little bit of idea there in terms of 
some of these things where uh, what's the what's the silver bullet? What's the quick fix? Right? Well, there isn't one, unfortunately. However. Uh, education and knowledge is the is the approach and then there are processes that can be put into place the biggest challenge that I found with regards to adopting uh, you know these these practices is that the people that are are making decisions come from a different generation and so they're used to, to what has worked in the past and so those systems are in place the problem with not being aware of the context shifting is what can impact a company uh, and, and basically go out of business because now you don't have the structure set up for the new world. You're, you're still focused on the, the previous uh, century and that's what we, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about is what are those processes? What are those things that can be implemented that are not secret? that can be put into the organization. So you will be talking about specific things that businesses can do it's to... Communities of practice, values, and how you can assess values, how you can nice. assess leadership uh, characters. There's, a, there's over 30 characteristics and behaviors that you can actually assess. Job fit, we're gonna talk about personalities of how personalities actually make it so a person engages versus having the wrong job fit, right? So there's a, a I mean, you, you're you expert on this as well as with your HR background. So yeah, we'll be talking about those things yeah. you know and I think that Hawaii is in a, a challenging situation all in itself with one of the lowest unemployment rates in the nation mm -hmm. and then folks needing to find jobs and stay in those jobs and the businesses needing to find them and retain them mm -hmm. and then of course the attraction and the lure of whatever is out there across the sea yeah. right yeah. In the mainland. Yeah. and yeah. how do we how do we keep that together right yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the hashtag I am engaged event and how people can reach out to you to get involved. Yes, go ahead. Oh, well, I did want to add that we are um, we have some fun things for our students as well during, throughout yes. the week. Um, we do have them involved in, and Dr. Renee actually came up with this, um, having them hashtag I am engaged, but also just writing comments about why they're engaged, and and we did this during uh, commencement week as well and we had a lot of great responses from our students just to see that passion they have and that's the whole idea of engagement is what is that passion that keeps you going and committed so uh, that's you know some fun things and other various activities that we're going to have around the, the campus during the week Fantastic. and this is not going to be a one-time thing we're looking at especially our communication with the leaders we want this to happen on a quarterly basis let's get together let's see what's working what's not and how can we come up with the new and next? And maybe it's an opportunity for experiential learning or additional mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. for the University Fantastic. of Phoenix. Fantastic. Yes. Why don't you tell your audience how they can get involved and sign up to attend yes. the hashtag I'm sure. engaged. I love the, I love the name of the, the event. It's so catchy. We'll give that to Dr. Renee. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's come up with she got all the style. Right. She's got all the style. She does. She does. <laughs> tell us how, so, to, how to sign up. Sure. If you'd like to sign up, you can email us at events.hawaii at phoenix.edu and then we'll provide uh, response and information. I'm so excited. Yes. I can't wait to hear all about the lineup and all that's going on for such a, a valuable event to the community. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to thank you for joining us yeah. today. Oh, I know everybody you. squeeze in, but oh, um, we like thank you so much. <laughs> That's right. Ohana That's right. Dr. Van Pelt, Dr. Green, and Ty Tynan. Um, thanks for joining us. We are out of time. If you would like to be um, on the Business in Hawaii show, please feel free to email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 o'clock, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week.